Alright, so for this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to cover a couple of basic tools that you might use in Rhino um, and just so that we can sort of list them off and you'll see it in the description below. Uh, twist, Revolve, Project, Cage Edit, uh, Extract Wireframe, and at the end of this we're going to um, use the Make 2D command to start to extract some drawings. Uh, so what we're going to do here is, uh, you've seen, I've gone through and modeled this out uh, once already. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, hit Control A and hide all this. If you want to hide geometry, you can do that. Uh, when you want to see it again, if you just type show, then you'll be able to, to basically see all that stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start. Uh, we're going to use the an example here of a lighting fixture that one of the students that I'm working with is developing, and she, right now we're in inches, has a, and I'll turn on my grid snapping, an 8 inch tall, so I hit type 8, it'll give me a distance. If I hold shift, it'll go into ortho. Uh, and then she has a two inch base, and then she has a five inch midsection. By just using my snapping grid, I'll pull it over. And so this is going to be the general outline that she's going to be drawing for this. And so if we come over here, I'm just going to control, grab the edit point here. Okay, and so that gives us our profile. And so what we can then do is we can use the Revolve tool, and we set the axis for that. And so now you can see it's trying to project it all the way around. It's going to ask for a start angle up here. So we hit Enter and a revolution angle. So you want it to go all the way around to full 100 and 360 degrees. You just type 360 up there um, and hit Enter. You can see I've already run this command before. So now if we go into our perspective view, over around, you can see we have this sort of nice teardrop shape. So what we're going to do, you never want to edit your original, and if you have, get in the habit of moving things at consistent distance, um, it makes it easier for you to move geometries back and forth between your versions. So I'm just going to move that over 10 inches. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the project tool to create some uh, sections on that. So grabbing the, using my object snaps, you can see this toggle on down here, and I'm going to snap to the end here. Uh, and then I'm going to disable them temporarily here so that I don't snap through this anymore. And I'm also going to disable my grid snap temporarily so that I can draw nice smooth curves in the way that I want. Okay. Alright, and so then I'm going to use uh, one of the tools that I didn't talk about using at the beginning. It's an polar array or array polar. And if I set that at the center here, and this is where I want to toggle back on my grid snapping, I can grab the center of that. And then it's going to ask you up here the number of items and then the angle reference. And so if I wanted to basically divide that up amongst five, uh, amongst the full 360, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'm gonna change the number of items and we'll set that to 15. Oh, that looks like that's too many because they're gonna have intersections. So maybe 10, yeah, okay. And so you hit enter and confirm and it'll create the geometry. And you can see that that's floating above and not actually on our surface here. So we select that those geometries and then activate that viewport, we can then project that onto the surface. So we hit enter and enter. Now it's important that when you guys are going through and using that particular tool, you pay attention to the viewport that you're into, that you're in, sorry. Um, so whatever viewport that you are projecting in, so like here, if I, if I run that same command and type project and then select the surface in this viewport, it comes up here and it says these things miss, and that's because it's projecting towards the construction plane that's activated in here. And when we're in plan, the construction plane, it represents this grid, and we see that in perspective. Both plan and uh, perspective have the same C plane, construction plane. And so it'll project down towards this or up toward, away from it, essentially perpendicular to that. And you can see that that would not align well with the geometries in this. Okay. So then what we can do is, again, we want to just take this and copy away 10. So then we'll take it and select this guy, and then we're going to split it out. And so we'll take that and select the geometries we want it to cut. And now we have each one of these guys has a nice, maybe not so nice, uh, geometry to it. So then what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, this isn't necessarily what we want for, for this particular guy here, this is kind of uh, a little bit too smooth and we want this to be a little bit more faceted. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn off the ISO curves. 
And so that to remove that little line that was in the middle of that. And then I'm going to extract the wireframe of this. And what that did is that takes all the outline curves, and I'm going to hide the actual thing. So it gives us these geometries now that we can take. I can go ahead and delete all the, the stuff I don't need. And then I can create a loft in between them. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a straight section. This isn't the most elegant piece here. Um, that's going to create some problems, so I want to go to 3D printing. Um, but this will be a way of, to, of going around and fastening that. So again, I'm going to do an array puller, 10 items. And now if I use my shaded render, you can see the difference here. So we have a nice set of facets on this versus the smooth. Okay. And so uh, you guys can go through and say you might be mostly satisfied with this. Um, maybe not. So again, what we'll do is we'll take this and copy it down. Ten. And then I'm going to use the cage edit tool to do some massaging on this. So if you just type cage edit, the first thing you want to do in this command is hit the bounding box. And then essentially you can just sort of um, go through this. You're going to use the world coordinate system. Uh, and then the cage points, you can increase this and you can set the degree of those weights. Um, I think the standard 4x4x4 four by four by four works really well with the 333 three, three, three weight. Uh, and so we hit this and then it's, you can see the box appear. And then we can go ahead and edit that. Okay. And so now that gives us a cage that if we grab control points in, we can massage the geometries around. And this is similar to some of the warp tools that you would find in Photoshop. Okay. So that's one way we can go ahead and manipulate this. And say we wanted to get in here and maybe we want to fix that. This isn't the best way to do that, but if we want to start to like just massage the overall geometries around, that's a good way. So we hit escape, we go ahead and just delete that out. Uh, the other way we can start to adjust this is if we turn on the weights on the surface. Oh. Oh. And because this is a poly surface here, let's explode that out. Well, this isn't very clean, unfortunately, but if we come in here, we can also turn on the weights on this and start to move those around as well. Okay? So this is some of the ways that you can start to massage these geometries around um, in the software. But, so let's say that we get that to some resolution that we actually like, and that's our guy. Move this over 10. Then we want to, we don't want this to be so uniform that it just sort of doesn't have much to it. Uh, so if we go through here, I'm going to just pan over. What we're going to do now is use the twist command. Type twist. And then we're going to start an axis. And I'm going to start it at the base, but I'm going to do it slightly off the axis. Because if I do it on axis, what will end up happening is it'll just sort of spin around. Uh, and you'll get sort of a, a Gherkin, Norman Foster building effect on this. And it doesn't really, it still creates a pretty uniform effect on there. But if I go slightly off axis here, what we'll do is it'll start to twist that around. And we can start to massage this thing into some kind of shape. And then again, once you guys get to this resolution, we can copy this over. And we can also cage edit this. B for bounding box. Well, So we can come in here and then, so we want to grab all those control points, we can massage this around. Okay? Right now this kind of looks like a pile of poop, but um, this gives you a clear understanding of how to use the tools. So once we have done that, we might be pretty satisfied with this, um, and we want to start to render some views. So if we want to render Axon, if we go into one of our um, paraline views, and then use the orbit tool, we can orbit around, and we can get a really nice process diagram of everything that we've done here. And this is why I like using an even spacing. So I'll take this thing that we uh, didn't really use and hide it. And then what we'll do is, if I shade this viewport, we can come in here. And there's some other stuff in here that I don't necessarily want, but we won't. It'll all go away. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make 2D. And we can go ahead and 
do that and it's going to create a 2D representation and it's going to have two line types that we can then take into Illustrator and I'll show you what we can do with that here in a second. And the more complex the geometry, the, the harder this is on the machine. So. Okay, and so you saw this uh, appear over here. Now let's go out of this viewport. You can see in the plan view, now we have that same view that we have over here in line drawing. And if I deselect this, the white lines are hidden lines that you don't necessarily see, uh, and they're back and behind there. We want all of that. So what I'll do now is I will export this to Illustrator. W Illustrator, and we'll just call this Tester. Save. Uh, and then that's quite large, so we'll go, let's do quarter scale. Because remember, this is actually basically one to one, so that's still eight inches. Uh, and that's the nice thing about doing the stuff in the orthographic views. So we'll pop into Illustrator now. File, new. Oh, I might have made a mad. Sorry, we want to file, open the file that we just wrote up our tester file. We can see that this is in here and it took the entire um, viewport. For right now we want to select that and then we can scale this up. Control, Shift, Alt and it'll expand out. Okay. And let's see if we can find that little weight that is. Holding Shift to keep the proportions uh, in alignment. And you can see our, our diagram now. Control plus to zoom in, and then V to grab that. And so what I did is I grabbed one of those white lines, and then we're going to use select, same stroke color. Now we have all those white lines selected. Let's give them something we can a color we can actually see. Double click on the swatch, we can make that a light gray. And you can start to see those rendering out now. I'll uh, we'll set the line weight to something really light since it's um, that. And we're going to make this a dash line. So now you can start to, if we zoom in here, you can see through the geometry, uh, and we can see the dashed lines are representing that. So we can come in here and then select the black lines, same stroke color. We can give those a little bit beefier line weight to make them a little bit more pronounced. Well, that might have been a mistake, so I'll hit Control Z. Might be just too much. Okay. And then you can come in here and also, um, and I'll go through in another demo and show you guys another way of doing this, but this enables you guys to create some really nice line diagrams in, uh, and here's a better image, in, in Illustrator, without having to go through and, and do a lot of complex stuff. And this is at a scale, this is at a quarter scale drawing for what you guys, your ASIC purposes. Well, it's, it came in at quarter scale, and then I manipulated it so we can see. All right, uh, but that essentially covers everything for this tutorial.